G'day! You might, be one, you might be wondering what the hell you're looking at here. Well, let me show you. Cantilever suspension on a mini hot rod. Check out how I did it. Here is a rough sketch of cantilever suspension that I want to put on the mini hot rod. Uh, basically, the pivot point, this part right here, this, this part of my little finger will be the eye beam and the point will be attached to the shock and it will just go like that, basically. So this movement will compress the, sh the shock spring. Um, the distance between here and there is your uh, ratio. So at the moment this is one and a half to two and a half. Uh, so that's a uh, 150%. I'm not sure. But anyway, I can make these longer. I have different holes in, uh, different holes here. I can orientate this wherever I like. This isn't an accurate drawing. Uh, this is just to get it out of my head and onto a piece of paper so I could see it. Uh, looking under the mini rod, uh, I got plenty of room uh, to attach the pivot there, coming down whatever angle I like, and then uh, connecting rod from there to there, the, the R beam to the pivot, and then from the top of the pivot, focusing on looking at the top of the pivot up here, will be connected to this shock and spring which will be connected to this rail here on the guts just like that easy peasy uh, i did want to have well, originally i was going to have the springs going up between the grill and the front of the chassis it's very tight in there and that's when the pedals and you know, cables and wires and linkages and all sorts of stuff are going to be uh, so I didn't want to clutter that up with suspension so I'm doing a cantilever um, and unless you're like laying on the ground looking underneath it you won't you won't even see it you might sort of see something in here but I doubt it so that's it let's get it off the paper and into steel Here's a good tip for you. Clamp a piece of bar in behind your uh, work as a stop. That way you can get repeatable holes every time. So I got four holes to drill uh, in those. Also, I broke this yesterday, broke the end of it. Uh, good thing about being a tool maker, I put a new end on it. And also this part here, the 10 mil, Hole was blunt, so I sharpened it. Normally, when you sharpen these, you sharpen this face. The amount of wear on that wasn't able to do that, so I sharpened the flute or the uh, the top part. Just made it slightly deeper. Sharpening drill bits is an art form in itself, but I'm glad I know how to do it. Because uh, also this 10 mil drill bit was getting blunt, so I just uh, sharpened her up a little bit. I got this little diamond wheel heel. Uh, it's from Aldi. I took the, the safety guards off it. Uh, tricked the safety switch with this bit. And that's what I used to uh, sharpen my drill bits. Now for some drilling. Alright, got all my holes drilled. Pretty happy that they're all the same. So that's how it's gonna look under here. So I'm gonna be running two shocks. Because uh, this has a, a little bit of twist in it which is what you want. Uh, so, got my shock mounts there. Uh, I'll only be able to weld up here and along there. 
won't really be able to weld underneath, which is fine, it'll be plenty strong. Uh, so I'm going to clean up all the steel, get those welded in. So I'll just do one at a time. And then I can move on to the fun part, which is uh, working out the lever mechanism. So this will sit pretty close to the floor. And then the, the lever will be sort of here. And then as this travels down, because this is upside down at the moment, uh, this will compress the spring. I'm going to work out the ratio or have a lot of adjustability. Um, also don't want this on the, the lever coming from here on too much of an angle because if it does it could go past center and then plop that way and that would be a pain in the butt. But, uh, I'll just get these attached and I'll get back to you. After lots of cutting, drilling, measuring, this is what I've come up with. Uh, it's just sitting there at the moment. I'm going to weld these, these two bits of that. These are exactly where they are. They're going to go flush on there. I'm going to weld those. And then the carrier up here is going to be welded. So it's going to look like that when this travels down and we'll push this out and do the suspension. Fingers crossed. <laughs> it works in my head. It works. You know, I did um, some origami. Uh, I used some wire. Uh, bent up this very crudely. So in my head, it works. I just got to weld it all together and see if it actually works. Time lapse time. Right, it's together. It's just tacked, just tacked here and on the bottom because I'm not sure if it's going to work. Uh, put something under it. One of these guys will do. Oh, she's stiff. Like, I wasn't expecting it to be. not how it's supposed to work. I think these need to be hard links and not flexible links which can easily be rectified. Let's lift them up like that a bit. Throw some tacks on it. in here but I was still able to compress them like by pushing down on them
That one's working. That one's not. Um, I'm going to flip this thing over. And jump on it. <laughs> All right, so it's on the floor and I was jumping on it and it barely moved. So, I'm gonna go up to my bone yard where I got all my old quad bikes and uh, see if I can find some springs that work. This is my quad bike graveyard. Underneath the chestnut tree. <laughs> Safe and sound. Um, I'm pretty sure all the front ones on that are seized up. Let this back in. Yep, that's just crushing and not rebounding. Uh, what about this one? Oh, that one works. And these front ones I don't think work. I'm pretty sure I jumped on them. I think one of them works and the other one doesn't. It's hard to do with the camera in my hand, so I'm going to turn you off and tell you what I find out. Well, this one's the winner. The front ones work. They're a little stiff, but that's okay. And this back one works. Now I'm having a closer look at these while it's up this way. I can see that this is trying to go backwards. And it should be going forwards. Same in the other one. The pivot points too far forwards on the bottom here and there. So I'm thinking if I shorten these links, um, will it sit further forward? Hmm. Experimental. Um. So I know that. A, one of these shocks works and the other one's a bit stiff but it, it should if it if this is trying to come this way instead of going forwards it's not going to work at all it's just going to lock up so i'm going to investigate that before i get too hasty with anything else right so i've tried a few different things i've watched a lot of videos on youtube uh, i tried these slightly softer springs still didn't work so I figured that the, the ratio is wrong. So I'm going to swap these around. So the long side is acting on the I-beam and the short side is on the spring. And these are going to be bolted directly to the spring rather than this part. Um, which I ended up having to weld to these anyway. Um, so that's going to be removed. The short side is going to be on here, the long side is going to be on here, and I have to move this. So that's what I'm going to do now. Check it out. Working cantilever suspension on a mini hot rod. Probably a world first. But I don't really care about that. As long as it works, I'm happy. Um, so I've got independent movement side to side. And down. I want to get all these measurements and redesign it so it looks better and is slightly more compact. But I'm happy it works. I had the geometry backwards, I'll show you. So I had the short arm on the, the, uh, the R beam there and the long arm on there because so, I thought these would be a softer spring that i'd need uh less action on here or more action on here and and less on here or is that no it's the other way around the opposite of what i've got going on now so i've got more movement here for less movement here um, and these swing in into this here so i've got quite a lot of uh movement which i don't really need but handy to have this is also can be adjustable by changing 
uh, putting a few more holes in here, I can make it stiffer. Uh, if I shorten this link here, I can lower the car. Uh, but for now, I'm going to leave all the dimensions as they are, pretty much. I make this triangulated, or a bit like that, and make it look a lot prettier. Make it join up better because there's a big gap in there and and whatnot. But yeah, um, I added this in to support these because these were over on this one. It's all learning. I've never done cantilever suspension. I've never built a go kart mini hot rod, you know, uh, I really enjoy fabrication and figuring things out for myself. I had to do a, a lot of research on um, cantilever stuff, uh, you can watch a few YouTube videos and, and whatnot. Most of their stuff is um, one to one, so these arms are equal length, but they're using it on cars with um, adjustable suspension and they can they, they, they can afford to buy softer springs and whatnot yeah pretty happy Check it out, shiny, working. I think it turned out rather nice. These are adjustable links, so I can raise the right height. This will be its lowest, but I'll show you the components in their raw form right over here on the bench. Right, so before my pivots were a bolt in a tube, dodgy. Now, I got a solid bit around. This one isn't drilled all the way through, but I drilled uh, one, two, three, four, five, six of them all the way through. And this nifty little bolt here, it's called a concealed thread bolt. Fits beautifully in there. And that's what it's rotating on now. Um, I'm not going to worry about, I don't have to worry about wearing out threads, snapping bolts. That was prototyping, that's finished product. And I think it looks rather snazzy with its little finger cut off holes in it and little adjustable links, Got plenty of clearance. Nope. Third time's a charm for this one. So the first one, as you will have seen, I don't know how to explain it to you, you've already seen it. 